Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, and this time the KC Cup is going on. It is taking place right now. Stage 1 is happening. I've already qualified for Stage 2 because I was King of Games during last season, but Stage 1 is still fun to play through. It's good practice. It's a lot of gems, so it's still worthwhile to mess around with. Uh, but Stage 2 doesn't start until next weekend, and I will definitely be messing around with that a lot as well. But for Stage 1, I've just been playing with my uh, sort of poverty Cyber Angel list, and it's been doing actually really well. Uh, I thought that I had two Sephiras when I was uh, leveling up Alexis to get the Petite Angels and get all the cards that I needed. Uh, but it turns out I actually only had one Sephira, which is strange because I could have sworn I bought out the Galactic Origin box like twice. Like, I was down to like minuscule packs on it very, very... Uh, very in multiple times because I have like three cosmic cyclones um, so I've had to reset that box like twice but apparently I just didn't get Sephira's out of it before I reset it the last time so I'll have to throw some like money or a bunch of gems at that box to continue trying to get my Sephira but uh, I will definitely be putting a second Sephira in here as soon as I get it but this is basically what I'm messing around with like uh, playing Econs for the mirror and just because it's generically good uh, across the board except against Hazy uh, but I like this deck because this deck is like it wins quick or it loses quick and it's a combo deck Like I feel like I'm playing Necros and Duel Links because Dakini is so overpowered in terms of its interactions in this game uh, Like it's easily countered by Econ, but if you're not playing poorly then Econ usually doesn't matter uh, Because like sure you lose your Dakini But you still outed the monster and you've added a back row to boot and you still have like cards on the field that your opponent has to deal with This deck's actually just really cool and really fun uh, to play in terms of a technical aspect. Um, I do have access to like the Venu cards. I have a lot of them. I've got like two to three Primal Cry. I think there's three. I don't know. For some reason the little thing is blurred out there. Don't know why. Uh, but I definitely have three Venus, but I can easily get a third Primal Cry because I have enough ranked uh, tickets left over. Uh, but I tested this and uh, it wasn't that good. Like the Sephira version is just superior because of what Sephira does in your in phase. Um, basically getting back your Dakinis and stuff like that. But this is basically the build I've been messing around with because I only have access to two Senjus. I only have access to the one Sephira, even though I thought I had more. Trying to get a second Sephira, and I'll definitely update the list as I go along if I do live streams with this deck or whatever. But anyway, let us go into the KC Cup and continue playing out through Stage 1 because I've gotten up to dual level 17 with this deck. And uh, it's just been really fun. It's been a lot of practice. I've never been able to really play with this deck actively because I didn't have the cards for it until recently because Petite Angels is pretty important and you have to basically get Alexis to level 40 for that. So, And Alexis, without a skill on her, is incredibly hard to try and play through PvP with. So let's try and get like four or five games, depending on what time permits, uh, for this to allow me to do. But so, okay, we're playing against Rex, which is more than likely just going to be a Dinosaur matchup. Like, I don't think I've ever Duel. seen anyone playing Rex and not be playing Dinos. Uh, and my opponent's going first, which is good because my hand really needs a fifth card to unbrick it. Uh, if I draw a Benton, my hand becomes amazing. If I draw Dakini, my hand becomes manageable. My hand would lose to Econ, though. If I draw Edaton, my hand becomes amazing. Uh, and if I draw Sephira... If I draw Sephira, my hand becomes kind of okay. It kind of comes okay because the Econ is backing it up. It all just really depends on what my opponent has in terms of monster and back row. Uh, okay, a Brachios and one back row. Okay. I can deal with this. A Hymn of Light. Okay, well that's not ideal. <laughs> it's not ideal at all. Uh, shit. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to summon this Petite Angel and then get a Surge. Like, that's, that's like like I said, that's what I like about this deck. You either win fast or lose fast with minor exception. And that makes this deck, like, really good uh, for Casey Cup Stage 2, potentially. Uh, is, the, is that, like, you legitimately have, um, like, just so many games that are just over within, like, two to three turns. Whether because you bricked or because you opened Godly. And it's, uh, it's one of those things that's kind of hard to deal with on a certain level if you open poorly. Uh, which, playing more Sephira is obviously, it helps this a bit because it lets you have the potential to draw more ritual monsters. But still, oh, this hand sucks. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, good. It's, it's infinitely better now that he's just going straight into battle phase and attacking with the Brachios. Amazing. Uh, and yes, I'm playing this 5-card extra deck of just GB monsters, uh, because I want my opponents to possibly think that I'm playing GBs, and sometimes they do. 
Like, sometimes I'll just get greedy and I'll turn one set of Sinju and set, like, a ritual spell or two. And my opponents just won't attack into it, and then next turn I'll flip the Sinju. Um, and, like, that's a great play. But let's see. Okay, so I've got the Sinju now, which means I can normal summon Sinju. I can keep that. I can do a Machine Angel ritual. Yes, okay. So we'll summon Sinju. We'll keep the Petite Angel in my hand. And so what I can do is I can go Sinju here for Edaten. And then I can Sprite's Blessing, Edaten out, tributing Benton. Then Benton would search for Dakini. Uh, and then Edaten will search for uh, Absolute Ritual, which I can then pop and put onto the board. Um, and this plays around Econ. This is what I was talking about, about how you just play around Econ. Like, I could get greedy and tribute the Edaten from the field just to make my uh, Dakini bigger. Or I could just leave uh, the Senju and the Edaten out and just use Absolute Ritual just straight from Grave. And, uh... And that means that even if my opponent Econ takes my Dakini, I still have 3,000 points of damage on the board in terms of what's being summoned. Uh, so that's that's great. That's that's what you need to, to do. You just need to play smart, because I've 100% been Econed on my Dakini like twice in one game, and neither of them mattered because I was just playing smart. Uh, but So these will activate. The Benton will get a search for Dakini. The Eta 10 will search for Machine Angel Absolute Ritual. So this deck still functions. This deck, this deck still operates rather well. And I've got the Petite Angel for the follow-up, along with the Hymn of Light that's chilling in my hand, so I could draw into Sephira, potentially. Uh, but yeah, Absolute Ritual will come to my hand. Does this display it as it is on your deck list? I actually haven't paid attention, because those look like they were in order as how they are on my deck list. Because uh, I know that's how Destiny Draw works now. Oh, Spell Shield Type 8, excuse me? <laughs> what an awful way to deal with this. That was actually terrible. Oh my lord. You still lose. Hold on. There's got to be a way for this to be game. If I econ take tributing the Sinju, taking this, that's 38. No, 37. Uh, well, your, your thing still doesn't matter. Yeah, it still doesn't matter. Spell Shield Type 8 in Dinos. This is this is the kind of thing that you encounter in Stage 1. I'm surprised he's as high as he is, though, on the ladder. Like, I, we, we got out of the Yugi's Grandpa's Cards tier uh, level stuff, and now we're just in this. Okay, so another Black Brachios. Putting this into defense mode. And I don't really care if that dies. I don't even care if my entire board dies, because... Well, actually, I kind of do. I'm lying. I do care. Uh, no anti-magic arrows, it seems. I had my toggle on to play around that. Uh, I've got Him of Light, and I've got this, which can search Benton or Machine Angel Ritual. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make him choose which one he wants to kill. So I'll, I'll definitely econ this to defense mode. If he wants to kill the Sinju, he has to kill the Sinju. If he doesn't want to, if he wants to just get the Edison off the board, okay. I don't think that's correct for you, but it really just depends on what I draw. Okay, perfect. It wasn't correct for you. Get got. Um, so now this will search Machine Angel Ritual, which will then allow me to drop this Dakini, and then I can just kill both of these. Perfect. Perfecto. Spell Shield Type Eight ain't shit. Uh, and then this searches a Sinju, too, which allows me to have a uh, good follow-up with the, um, with the Hymn of Light that's in my hand. Wait, what? Oh. Whoa, hold up. <laughs> Thank God it lets you go back. I was about to summon my Benton out of my hand. <laughs> Thank God Duel Links lets you go back. It's like, are you sure? This is a lot of things that are about to happen. Are you sure you're okay with this? <laughs> yes. Um... But so yeah, this searches Sinju, Dakini is going to add back Benton in my end phase, which then uh, allows me to allows me to do some good shit by Sinju. If there's a next turn, auto searches Sephira, Benton will be in my hand because of Dakini, and then uh, that means that, that Sephira just comes straight down. Or I might just add back Edaten, honestly. Edaten seems like the better card to add back. Because I could draw into Benton, or I could draw into Sephira, that's two cards in my seven card deck. Eda 10 is a card that recycles my absolute rituals from my graveyard, which is fantastic, which is something that I like. Okay, so we'll kill this. Am I going to get, like, Sphere Karibo now? Okay, no. There's no delay on your toggle. Good. And so now this game is sewn up in my favor. 100%. 
And that's the thing I like about Cyber Angels as well, is that it is possible to just grind with this deck, and people don't really respect that. Uh, because of the Sephiras and because of how Dakini operates, like, there have been some games where I literally just summon Dakini, and, like, I run into a wall of disruption, and I just put the Dakini in defense mode, and I just keep making its defense bigger and bigger with, like, tributing Edaton every turn. And I just keep adding back the Edaton, and, like, I just grind resources out, and I just summon, like, Sephira every turn. Uh, and it's just, it just works. Like, this deck manages resources very, very well. This card is quite easily the Necros of Trisha of Dual Links. Like, this card is actually just unfair. Just make your opponent send a card to Grave. It's easily countered, but if you're not stupid, then that doesn't matter. Or if your hand just... If your hand sucked, then, uh, then the, uh, econ on it probably mattered, but... Otherwise, like, it's usually just fine. Okay, so Salamandra is going to boost itself twice. Uh, if it tries to kill the Dakini, Machine Angel Ritual is engraved, so it'll just save it. Easy. Yes. 100%. I'll tribute this Edaton next turn. Make my shit big. Make it big and beefy. I'll probably run into a wall of disruption, but that's okay. Wait, nope, never mind. It's perfectly fine, because this is an Econ. I can Econ take this, and now nothing matters. Quite literally. Uh, well, let's see. I need... I actually kind of needed Sinju to die. <laughs> Weirdly enough. I just don't have space. That's the biggest issue here. Uh, the biggest space... The biggest issue right now is space. But this can add Sephira, which will just be waiting. I could tribute Dakini to take this. It doesn't matter, like, it's game through a wall of disruption anyway, because of how I know how to play this game. <laughs> so, I don't even know why I'm stressing out. Uh, we just go into battle phase and we end this game. We go into the battle phase. Anything? Do you have anything back there? That's not a chainable card! Amazing. Fantastic. Get got. Get got. I'll take this. This is mine now. Thanks for boosting it for me. Yes, continue the attack. That card was a bluff. That card was probably like an anti- No, was another spell shield type 8. Or wait, no, that was already in his graveyard. Hmm, what was that other card? It's probably like a bluffed anti-magic arrows or something like that. But anyway, Jesus Christ, I was talking about how this deck wins fast and I just sat there and played like an 8 minute game. We're 12 minutes in. Okay, well, this... This video might only be like three. I'll probably, I'll go until I rank up probably because I don't see myself losing with this deck. I took that loss there just to reset my ranking system because like, I got into uh, dual level 17 and I just entered a game and surrendered it before I started recording this to make sure that there wasn't, because I don't know how the Kaiba Cup system specifically works. Uh, like, I don't know if it like stacks, like if you're on like a win streak, it may, if it requires less wins to get up to uh, other ranks, I don't know. I haven't done nearly as much research into that kind of shit. Is, the same act is this the exact same person? I, I mean, I'm down Duel. to play against dinos. Uh, I'm going first. Let's see, I could summon this, do Edaton, but none of that gets me to a Sephira, which is the only thing I'd want to do turn one. So I'm just going to pass. The dinosaur deck's not going to kill me. That's the glorious thing about this game, is the dinosaur deck's not going to kill me. Setting two, and summoning Salamandra. Okay. Hitting me with that? Sure. Fair shout. Okay, what is this? A Sinju. Well, this is a Sprite's Blessing. I can normal summon this. I probably should have normal summoned this in past, but I didn't want to get Hydrogeddon to sleep, because like Hydra Hydrogeddon would have been like really close to game. Um... Let's see, I can summon Sinju, get Sephira, drop Sephira, get E to 10. But that's not going to be as impactful as summoning this. So I'll get this. Get this, get E to 10. Uh, use Sprite's Blessing to summon. Get Dakini. Get Absolute Ritual. Leave the E to 10 on the field. Why are you floodgating that? <laughs> okay. So my opponent sucks. Good to know. Uh... This should be easy then, unless this is like some other random thing that I need to worry about, but my opponent is apparently bad, so let's bully him. Alright, Sprite's Blessing. Because I can still tribute this for a ritual summon, because I can still tribute his cost. 
Well, not cost. I contribute because it has a verifiable level. So, summon Edithin. We'll search for Absolute Ritual and um, and uh, Dakini. We'll drop the Dakini. If it gets Econed, it gets Econed. I'll have this that I can swing with, and that'll be good. Uh, so, Dakini, come here. The only thing that I'd be really upset about is, like, Hydrogeton. That's the only thing I'd be really upset about, because that's the only card I would lose to. Hard lose to Hydrogeton. Uh, but Absolute Ritual can be added to hand here. And now I can just play it, tributing this, uh, this face-down, uh, shit, Petite Angel. <laughs> I kind of wish you could play through Petite Angel. I wish that it wasn't just, like, explicitly a level-up reward. because uh, that card's really good. And it's the right level as well for this play to happen. So we'll summon Dakini. This has to be an Econ for it to be real, for it to be anything real. But it could be another Floodgate. What we got? You've got something back there. No, you're just letting it happen. Okay. Good shit, my dude. Alright, so we'll just attack with these. Is that card nothing? That card is nothing. That card was nothing. <laughs> but see, that's what I'm talking about. You win fast. You win fast, you can lose fast, but the deck does have the capability of grinding. Uh, and that is what I really, really enjoy. I like playing Cyber Angels. I love playing this deck. Um... I wish I had two Sephiras, and I wish I had probably a third Senju, but at the same time, that card's accessible enough. Uh, it was the, the biggest issue is the Sephira, the lack of the second Sephira, because being able to follow up one Sephira with another Sephira on the next turn is actually pretty impactful, because that's what makes it to where the one Dakini in your deck isn't as stressed in terms of what you're trying to do with it, because you can consistently just keep recurring it to your hand. Uh, with one Sephira, you kind of have to alternate them, and it's kind of awful. Um... Because, like, you have to summon Dakini first, and then if they Econ take it and tribute it off, then you summon Sephira, and Sephira adds back Dakini. And then, like, if they out your Sephira, you can summon Dakini, and Dakini can add back Sephira. It's it's an odd situation to be in. I'm just going to pass. This hand sucks. <laughs> I need to draw any of my, like, other cards. Uh, I could even draw another Benton, and this hand would be kind of alright. But what am I doing? Why am I... Why am I just finding so many Dino decks at this point? Like, I've played three in a row, and they've all been different people, I assume. Um, this is just, like, the time for dinos, apparently. I guess, and they're, like, this one has, like, Japanese characters in the name. The other, I think the first one I played had Japanese characters in the name as well. I'd have to double check. Like, I guess it's just, like, Japan got out of school. Because it is about that time in Japan right now. It's, like, 4, 3, 34 in the afternoon in Japan right now. Uh, I guess all the, all the Japanese kids that love dinos woke up and started playing Duel Links. Okay. I, I was kind of joking. I didn't really want another Benton, but I guess I'll take it. Um, so I'll tribute Benton for Benton. And then... So this will search for... This will search for Sephira. And the Benton... Well, the Benton will search for... I could search for Cyber Petite Angel and then just drop Dakini. That would leave me with minimal follow-up. But it also deals with his monster a lot more efficiently than Sephira would. So yes, we're doing that. Like, Sephira's a card that I actually just don't want to search. That's why you play multiples of it. You usually never search that card. You want to draw that card. But, so, we'll use Petite Angel to add Dakini. I can Absolute Ritual, shuffle the Benton back, and use this. And then just use Dakini. If he Econ takes me, I've got the Benton left, and that's fine. So yeah, we'll do this. It just leaves me very little follow-up option, but Dakini is a superior card. So... Now I could tribute these... I could tribute the Benton on my field... And search Senju for the follow-up. But... That makes me more vulnerable to Econ. Because it, it leaves me with nothing on board. At least with the Benton here... He has to draw, like, Hydrogeton in order to kill me. He has something that responds to this. He has the Econ. Okay, see? So he's going to Econ take my Dakini. And it's not going to matter. Because I still have this Benton that's going to poke. So the only card I could lose to is... Um, is uh, Hydrogenon. Because Hydrogenon would kill this and then punch me for 19. By summoning another one out of deck. 
But anything else, like Black Brachios or whatever, I don't lose to. It becomes hard, but I don't lose to it. No, I actually just think I... I think I just played this wrong. I think I lose to everything in this deck now. I should have just summoned Sephira. I should have taken it a bit slower. Because now he's going to kill this. And I'm going to draw to one card. And that one card has to be like... That, that one card can't even really be anything. Sure, you're wasting anti-magic arrows on a set him of light. Amazing. Um, but so yeah, like this card is is nothing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I, I just played that wrong. I played that 100% wrong. I should have just done Sephira. Because at least with Sephira, I could have like increased my resource pool and then went for the push on the following turn. Uh, definitely should have started with the Sephira. I didn't, I didn't think it through to the point of, like, any monster in his deck ends the game for me. I thought that I was only going to lose to Hydrogenon, but then I thought about it again, and I was like, wait, no, I'm going to lose the Benton no matter what monster it is, and that means the card I draw is going to be something that's not usable for, like, a ritual combo. Uh, either that or I was supposed to tribute the Benton on field. Uh, but Benton on field being tributed, I would still lose the Econ because he would just normal summon a monster, and I would uh, lose because he would just normal summon that Salamandra. So, definitely should have gone for the other play. Well, let's see. None of this is playable, so I guess I'll just pass my turn. Really want to go second with this deck. I might try and get Dual Standby dropped on Taya to play with this, because that fifth card usually matters. I mean, this is a combo deck. It's a ritual deck. It operates... The very first play you make is a three-card combo. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, what is my opponent playing? Bastion, he could be playing the Popcorn deck. He could be playing Mighty as Fire with, like, Hazy Flame. Oh, he's playing this deck. He's got Snipe Hunters. All right. This deck's kind of cool. This deck plays Mighty as Fire as the skill, so you can make your Volcanic Rockets big, like 24 to 2500. Uh, but then it also just plays Snipe Hunter, so you can discard the Blaze Accelerator. This hand sucks. How do I brick so hard with this? Whoa. <laughs> this is why you need those extra Sephiras. Because, like, you just brick with it. Damn. Like, this deck is... is uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> kill me. The only reason I didn't surrender was because he could just normal summon a monster and kill me. It's a very fast process. And I want the points. I'll, I'll take the points. It gets me closer to my next gems. Which I want so I can get the Sephira. Because gems are my next level up reward. Okay, so I'll play one more game with this. Uh... That's unfortunate. I just literally bricked. That was so bad. That was so bad. That almost never happens. This deck is so consistent when you run balance on it. But it's less consistent than it should be because I am not playing the second or third copy of Sephira because I don't have them. Before somebody says in the comments, play Sephira, I know. I've said multiple times in this video that I just don't have them. <laughs> I swear, somebody's going to be like, you should really consider playing a second or third Sephira. I hear that that is going to, like, increase your ceiling and your consistency at getting the card, uh, really, really a lot. I'm not trying, okay, I'm not trying to end this video on me <laughs> losing a down rank game. Okay, good, I'm going second. Thank Christ. Thank Neptune. Uh, thank the Lord. Okay, so this hand's kind of good. I can normal summon Petite Angel, get Benton, do the Edith in play. This is regular Machine Angel Ritual as well, so that offers me some Grave Protection. I could use the Sprite's Blessing depending on what I draw if I want to save the Machine Angel Ritual in my hand. But I can set up a Dakini play with Edith on the field, or if I draw into Sephira or whatever, I can do some other things. So this is a hazy matchup. Well, that is not resolving. Oh my god, this hand is insane. Uh, destroyed and sent to the graveyard? That's not happening. Sorry, my man. Sorry to inform you, but you're about to play against your worst matchup, and I opened amazing. So, we'll add Benton. I can Machine Angel Ritual, the Edithin, and the Benton. Uh, that's Sprite's Blessing. I don't want to use that one. I want to use Sprite's Blessing for the Sephira on the Edithin. Uh, so I'm going to summon Edithin by using Benton. So I'm going to drop Dakini and then drop Sephira. And Dakini and Sephira are both going to get boosted. So, very quick game, very easy, very cookie cutter. I find it so hard to believe this deck has been nerfed like three times in Duel Links, and it's still just a tier one contender. Um, it's just, it's very influential in the format as well. Because, like, people thought this deck was dead, so Econ went away. And then it just came out of nowhere and got top three spots at the, uh, at, like, an MCS. 
Um, what do I want? I want Absolute Ritual. Yes, I do. Absolutely want the Absolute Ritual. Uh, so now I can activate this, tribute the the Petite Angel from my field to summon Dakini and shuffle back the Benton Engrave. Perfect! I'm not losing this rank down match. <laughs> not today. We ain't doing it. Uh, but I'd say this deck as it currently stands, in terms of how much I've played, it's gotten me to where I am. Like, I started playing from uh, dual level 1 to here. Um, and I've done this all in the span of like 6 or 7 hours. Like, it's been incredibly quick. Uh, but, uh... I'd say that, like, I'd say that this deck has got, like, a 70-ish percent win rate in terms of, like, the consistency hit that it took uh, without having the extra Saphiras in it. But, like, that's still really good. Like, that's that's the kind of deck you're looking for for, like, Stage 2 of the KC Cup. You're looking for a deck that has, like, a win rate that's, like, 70% or higher. Uh, and the fact that it just does quick games like this is even more of a reason why, like, it's a, it's a deck you should probably consider if you own even any of the pieces for it. Like, if you can build something as, like, poverty-looking as this. Um, and also, like, it's noteworthy that, like, I actually started the KC Cup uh, Stage 1 with, uh, with only one Machine Angel Absolute Ritual because you uh, get to, like, I think it's, like, 60 victories or whatever. If you get to 60 victories, you get a, uh, a super rare glossy ticket from the KC Cup rewards as a ranked uh, ticket reward. And a Glossy Dakini and Glossy Machine Angel Absolute Ritual are the choices for that. So you can just get a second Dakini or get a second Absolute Ritual. I'm trying to play more uh, in, the, in the stages to see if I can get another Super Rare ticket. I don't know if you can get more than one. But if you can, I might pick up a second Dakini with that and just play two and not even play the Machine Angel Ritual. Uh, because this card does make the deck a little bit more consistent, but with only one Saphira in it, uh, I think it's probably better for me to go for double Dakini. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to end this here. That was, I think, five games. Yeah, I think I won two, lost two, and then won the last one. So we'll end the video here. So let me know what you guys think about the Duel Links videos. If you want to see more Duel Links, let me know in the comments down below. Like the video, do all that sort of stuff. It really lets me know you want to see more of this. I've definitely been having some successful streams doing Duel Links, and I plan on doing another one, especially since the KC Cup is going on. I definitely want to make another account and, like, play through it and get up to uh, KC Cup Stage 2 as well on it, just for just for shits and giggles, potentially, for a live stream thing to do. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description if you want to connect with me or chat with me on other forms of social media or things like Twitch. And then... All that sort of stuff is uh, applicable to you if you're interested in it. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertsen, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.